Hey everybody, Alaskan Beard here, and today we are taking a look at Star Wars Racer Revenge for the PS4. This is the limited run games special edition, available for pre-order in October of 2019, and released in February of 2020. I am a little bit late. As you can see, we have a lovely yellow, almost goldenrod, foil embossed box with the Star Wars Racer Revenge and Limited Run Games logos on both sides. The description on the back reads, Fight to the finish at 600 miles per hour. Race against 18 of the most aggressive, unforgiving pod racers in the universe with supercharged AI keeping you in the thick of the action. Experience blistering speed with all new pod racers on 13 hair raising courses across five worlds to win your way to the Bunta Eve Classic. Smash your opponents into twisted wreckage on your way to victory. And then below that we get some screenshots for the game. Taking the lid off, you can see we have our Certificate of Authenticity right on top. Game 991 of 2500. If we pull the box's tongue, we can get to the rest of the goodies, with the first being our standard PS4 game case with mostly the same back as the outer box and a plain PS4 inside. Worth noting, I already moved the game case contents over to the Steelbook. They would normally be in the PS4 case. Next up is the Steelbook, which is a similar yellow to the outer box and has some gritty looking red racing stripes on the back. Opening it up, we can see the game disc itself and manual, which is nothing more than a brief ad for the safety disclaimer. I say this in every single video, but if I'm paying a lot extra to get a special edition, the least you guys can do is put together some kind of manual. Just put some art inside. I don't even need a real manual. Moving on, the inside of the case is a nice reflective gold with some black line art of ships presumably from the game. And then moving further on to the not game goodies, we have a few postcards. The logo for the game, some ship line art over the racing stripes, and then some colored ship art that is the other line art ship we see inside the game case. Then we have a poster, which I will throw on screen now. And then the last two pieces, which are up in the top of the box, are a pin and a commemorative coin with the name of the game on one side and Lucasfilm's logo on the other side. Stick around if you want to see some brief gameplay captured on a PS4 Pro, as well as my thoughts on the special edition itself. I'm in, they look around, but they don't buy. Why? Nobody buys. Star Wars Racer Revenge was originally released on PS2 in 2002. The version we're playing today on PS4 is emulating that original release. I'd be remiss in this video if I didn't say whether or not this game was fun, but I'm sure there are plenty of full reviews out there already, so if you're interested, go check one of those out. With that said, I think it's a fun kart racer with pretty decent controls, fun destruction mechanics, and a good sense of progression that lends itself to replayability given just how many character stories there are to play through. My only real gripe about the game is its lack of difficulty. I think it's definitely worth the $10 the game commands normally on PSN. It's currently $5 right now, by the way. With that out of the way, let's talk about how it runs emulated on the PS4. It looks pretty good up and, as you'd expect from a game released in 2002, running on hardware released in 2016, it runs at a consistent 60fps in 4K-ish. I say ish because while it's running in 4K, it is letterboxed to 4x3 aspect ratio, so you are getting all 2160 vertical pixels, but you are not getting all 3840 horizontal pixels. There are some hitches during the cutscenes, but I suspect that's due to running from disc or possibly just how loading was implemented in the original game. Now that we've talked about the game a bit, what do I think about the actual release? What I got from limited run games? Well, 
To give you some perspective, I dig prequel aged Star Wars media as well as a few of the newer franchises like the comics, books, and The Mandalorian. Now that you know the lens that I'm looking at this through, it's not worth what I paid and it's definitely not worth the $150 currently being asked on eBay. The two items I enjoy most from the release are the box itself and the steelbook. The pin is a nice addition as well, but I don't know that it adds that much value. What do I think I would pay for both of those things, the box and the steelbook? Probably $30 to $40. It's a $10 game and the other stuff isn't that expensive. I mean, you can get an $80 release of a $60 game and get the same kind of packaging that I received. Uh, look at Last of Us. They have an edition that had exactly that. They had a nice box, a steelbook, and an art book. And I want to say it was only $80. bucks. i am paying $75 for this, meaning I'm paying $45 more for this packaging than I paid for the Last of Us packaging. Not apples to apples, but it is a pretty decent comparison. So yeah, uh, maybe 30 bucks What is what I would pay for the content, not 75 And actually, I think all of the Lucasfilm re-releases that have happened so far from limited run games are pretty shallow as far as cost versus value. Uh, I'm sure a part of that is due to licensing in and of itself. You know, I'm sure the Star Wars franchise is not cheap, but it there's no way that accounts for the, what did I just say, uh, $45? So $35 Delta, if you include the cost of the game, there's there's no way. Some suggestions, I think, to maybe make this release worth closer to what I paid. Uh, they would need to include something like a display pod racer. Um, I don't know, take the time to make a freaking mule and some kind of bonus content. There's an art gallery in the game already, so why not take those assets and put them into a small cover art book? As for the rest of what I actually got, uh, folded posters suck. No matter the content, they always have the marks from being folded and that sucks. I would much rather them give the option to purchase the poster and like rolled and give me extra shipping costs than I would receive a folded poster as part of this release. Like just leave it out. There was also the coin that I haven't mentioned. That's, it's just a drab looking coin. Like there's nothing impressive about it. There's no reason for me to want to display it. I mentioned the pin is an all right addition. Like if I was into Star Wars enough, I would throw that on my bag for sure, no problem. And the postcards can be a nice addition, but I think the postcards all need to be the same orientation. They all need to be vertical or they all need to be horizontal so I can put them in one frame. And I don't really think including content that needs modification to look good, like a frame is necessarily great as far as a value add, like a poster, yes, you normally frame those if you want them to look really good, but there's no reason you can't just toss them up with some command strips or if you're a heathen, some tax. I, I don't know. I, I just don't think it's a value add if you have to modify it that much. Either way, I've rambled on enough about this release. It's not worth the money. I'm not gonna get rid of it because I'm a collector and it looks good next to my Star Wars Bounty Hunter release, but it don't don't go out and buy it on eBay. Just don't. Anyways, I've been Alaskan Beard. This has been my unboxing and brief review of Star Wars Racer Revenge Premium Edition from Limited Run Games. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you want more videos like this, subscribe. I have plenty of other game unboxings on the way. Hopefully ones I enjoy more than I did this one.